Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Very few young actors in Hollywood history have been able to reach the legendary status of James Dean. He had some serious dark spots in his family history and some other secrets that most fans never imagined. Today we will take a look at James Dean's life, how he started his career in Hollywood in the first place, how he managed to participate in bigger roles, and also why James Dean's safe driving promo video was never released. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Who was the man behind the brooding Hollywood sex symbol? The rebellious actor only starred in three films during his short career, but the impression he made on brooding teenage audiences was unmatched. His sensitive bad boy image has captivated both men and women for decades. In fact, over 60 years have passed since his tragic death, and yet he is still remembered as one of the greats, a cultural icon for the troubled and disillusioned. Yet the young man still managed to live a success-filled life, albeit a short one. There is no doubt that this star would have soared far higher had he gotten the chance, but even he didn't see his future reaching that far. James Dean, Hollywood's bad boy. Behind his bad boy rebellious persona were many secrets that most people don't know about. He was largely raised by his aunt and uncle. Born in a small city in Indiana, Dean soon moved with his parents to Santa Monica, California, when his father, a dental technician, was transferred to a hospital there. But at age nine, his mother died of cancer, and he was sent back to Indiana to live on his aunt and uncle's farm. From that point on, he would rarely see or even talk to his father other than a brief spell in which he stayed in his father's home while attending Santa Monica City College. Thanks to a childhood accident, his front teeth were fake. Described by his cousin as never one to sit still, a young Dean had his two front teeth knocked out while swinging on a trapeze in his aunt and uncle's barn. Dean later embellished the story, saying he lost them in a motorcycle accident. As an adult, he purportedly enjoyed surprising acquaintances by casually removing his false teeth mid-conversation. He set a local pole vault record. Despite being nearsighted, short and skinny, Dean was a standout athlete at his Indiana high school, playing baseball and basketball and running track. He was a heady player and a good competitor. He was what you would call a clean-cut, all-American type boy, his basketball coach once told a reporter. Dean particularly excelled at the pole vault, breaking the county record by the time he graduated in 1949. James Dean's first professional acting job was a Pepsi commercial. Upon graduating from high school in 1949, Dean hopped a bus to California in order to pursue acting while attending Santa Monica City College. But his first role was likely not up to the level of his talents. Dean was cast as part of an ensemble for a Pepsi commercial and seen dancing and singing around a jukebox. He was paid $30. He also worked as a parking lot attendant. Dean moved from Santa Monica City College to the University of California, Los Angeles, where he majored in theater, but soon dropped out. He then scored a series of minor roles in features, including 1952's Sailor Beware, a Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis comedy. Despite these breaks, Dean was still short on cash and worked as a parking lot attendant for CBS Studios until he moved to New York City in 1951 to study performing under famed acting coach Lee Strasberg. Dean starred in only three movies. Dropping out of college to focus full-time on acting, 
Dean landed bit roles in a few Hollywood films before moving to New York City in October 1951. While there, he appeared in two Broadway plays and numerous TV shows. Yet he did not catch his big break until 1954, when his portrayal of a houseboy in the play The Immoralist brought him to the attention of director Elia Kazan. With John Steinbeck's approval, Kazan cast Dean in a screen adaptation of Steinbeck's epic novel, East of Eden. Thus propelled to stardom, Dean next filmed Rebel Without a Cause, the only movie in which he received top billing, and Giant, which co-starred Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson. More movies were in the works, but Dean died before he could make them. James Dean was a stunt tester for a game show. After moving to New York, Dean was still in need of a steady paycheck. He became a stunt tester for the game show Beat the Clock, in which contestants were given tasks to complete in a given period of time. Producers needed to be sure the tasks were practical, so Dean was among those who tested them prior to airtime. Unfortunately for Dean, he completed them rapidly, which gave the show little idea of how a more average guest might fare. He was fired. James Dean didn't always bother to learn his lines. With East of Eden, the adaptation of the John Steinbeck novel, Dean came into his own as a screen performer. But according to co-star Raymond Massey, Dean's method approach could often complicate things for his fellow actors. Dean never knew his lines before coming on set, and would often ignore things like moving on cue or finding his marks. Dean was also prone to preparing by himself, then blowing a whistle when he was ready to let the other actors know it was time to shoot. James Dean had a great passion for racing cars, and that passion took his life. He filmed a promo video about safe driving, saying he is always careful and extra cautious while at the wheel. Unfortunately, he died soon after that interview, so it was never released. Interestingly, he got a speeding ticket only two hours before his death, if only that had slowed him down. When he wasn't acting or driving racing cars, he loved to practice magic tricks. He died driving a 1955 Porsche 550 Spider convertible. Dean was the first actor to receive an Academy Award nomination posthumously. Cinematographers, composers, writers, an actress and a costume designer had all received posthumous Oscar nominations, but never a male actor until 1956, when Dean's portrayal of troubled teenager Cal Trask in East of Eden won him a Best Actor nod. The next year he was nominated again for Best Actor, this time for playing ranch hand Jet Rink in Giant. He didn't win either year, however, losing out to Ernest Borgnine and Yul Brynner respectively. Since then, several other stars have likewise earned Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor nominations after their deaths, including Spencer Tracy and Heath Ledger, but Dean remains the only one with two posthumous nominations. It's funny that James Dean is remembered as one of the best-looking men of our century, but he never cared about his appearance. He wore dirty old jeans, putting his comfort in front of fashion and style. Jeans, a cigarette in the corner of his lips, dreamy eyes and a deep voice will always be a trademark of Dean's bad boy's charm. 